Are you serious? Are you serious? Last night, Mike from Around the World was my guest. It's a great show. You go to my uh, YouTube channel and watch the show. It's right there. That's the title of it. But we're going to listen to 14 minutes. Mike from Around the World predicts a volcano eruption coming to California. And he also says gases that are seeping from the ground is what caused the fires in California by studying the maps. Let's go right now and listen. I'm just going to give you 14 minutes of Mike from Around the World. You did it. How are you doing? Well, I'm good to go. Good to go so far. How about yourself? I'm doing great, Mike. I'm doing great. And uh, great to have you on with us again here tonight. Appreciate you coming on to be with us so much. Yeah, it's good. Every time we uh, come on, something has blown up or gone wrong. That That's weird. And it's, it's quite strange. It is very right. strange. A couple things, Mike. Uh, you said we'd be talking about a volcano. We are. Uh, the Philippines, the mountain Nayon erupted six times. Boom, 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 throwing ash high into the stratosphere. Um, and I don't even know if that's the volcano you were thinking was going to go off. So uh, can you tell us a little bit about this? Well, the activity itself, volcanic activity itself, is rising. There have actually been a couple, uh, to be honest with you. Okay. And now the attention is also being directed towards California. In case people didn't know, um, there's an expectancy uh, as of the last what last four days, four or five days, of uh, some type of eruption in California. Now I think they put out some sort of a soft statement to the public um, to increase awareness of volcanism in California, but they are expectant of a few things. They're, they're, they're following, they're trending, they're keeping pace, they're having no choice, but to, and they hate to print things like that. Um, but there should be a warning or some type of advisement to people in California, uh, in the scientific community, in, in, in the public, as far as an expectancy of a volcano about to erupt. A volcano yeah. in yeah. California? Uh, yeah. Do we know which, I mean, do we know which one? Well, that entire line is um, is active. There's such a pressure buildup inside of the Earth right now. It is just incredible. And what we see externally, as far as the uh, weather phenomena and things of that nature, that, that's uh, more of an echo uh, compared to what's happening on the inside of the Earth. It's very difficult to see anything on the inside of the Earth, and most of it's theorized, but there's a lot of pressure, a lot of energy being absorbed by the Earth. Is tectonic plates moving, Mike? Some of the people want to know in the chat room. They are they are severely smashed. They have special sensors that they will put in fault lines to track movements, Greg. Um, they can also measure pressure, now, one plate against the other. They do an estimation, but the pressure is incredibly enormous to a breaking point. We've not had enough small earthquakes to alleviate the pressure on the plates. And so this is going to yield a pretty large one. Uh, these uh, 7.0 magnitude earthquakes are simply not enough to alleviate that pressure because the energy absorption of the Earth is so massive that uh, there's no way a 7.0 is going to alleviate that. So what people could expect is a slew of smaller eruptions that are quite damaging. Yeah, it's a great point you're bringing up because I've been noticing over the last, let's say, 90 days that Alaska's had a lot of smaller earthquakes. It's been very active up there. But California's been kind of quiet. Been kind of yeah. quiet. Just a couple small ones there, you know, but no, it's been kind of quiet. So you're saying that pressure is really heavily building. Uh, and I don't know if that's Northern California or, or, or is there a volcano down in the San Andrea fault line at all? Well, there are, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, over 13 volcanoes lining California. I know that most people only know about um, um, the Shasta and things like that. Washington State up in those areas going down. And that the other half of the people are fixated on Yellowstone. But the problem is there are, through underground surveys, there are so many uh, different types of volcanoes. Remember, volcanoes form, right? 
things erupt and then all of a sudden you have the leftover remnants which is called that those the volcanoes that we see these big you know towering mountains that we see are remnants of volcanoes that formed that came uplifted out of the ground so you have one of those situations for example yellowstone is a baby in the usa yeah the yellowstone cold air is quite small which is why they don't mind uh talking about yellowstone which is in fact a model of some of the larger cold airs that lie underneath the united states um also italy has has an enormous um cold air underneath it uh it is massive and of course there's some more around the world but the usa has a quite a, a very large one underneath uh it spans from um New York through Pennsylvania all the way to West Virginia, sitting under some very old mountains. Um, so you have one there, but California's lying with them, out in the ocean and on land, all the way back into uh, that Nevada, Arizona, uh, Oregon, Idaho line. So it's a pretty, um, and they're now warning that if there should be articles out there right now speaking about an expectancy of volcanic activity in California. It's so, not out there, Mike. It's, no, 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 no. We're not hearing that. We're not hearing that. We're, we're, we're hearing about the cyclone, the bomb cyclone, which we can mention that for just for a second. We'll come back to California. This is a big story you're, bring, you're breaking on us. But this bomb cyclone, what, or what Mr. BBB333 calls a land hurricane, you know, you said, you have said over the last five years that the waves of energy would start pushing down the jet stream would start pushing it down onto the surface and create these massive straight line winds. Well, yesterday, 100 mile an hour winds in Logan, New Mexico, blows a train right off, the, derails it off the tracks, blows semi trucks off the sides of the road and tips them over. Uh, we have this bomb blizzard in, in, in Colorado Springs of a biblical proportion with a thousand cars stranded in snow, the wind 97 miles an hour. Could you imagine being in that? Tornadoes today in Michigan. Indiana, Kentucky, uh, just it goes on and on. So, is this bomb cyclone? Is this is this what you're talking about? Straight line winds. Yeah, that that's a good example of the high low pressure system. Uh, I, I believe that the high, it's even right now is sitting near Wyoming, Colorado, Nebraska, Kansas, all those places, and then you have a low pressure system over near uh, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Michigan, those places. In between there, you have isobars. But what happened in this case is that you had a you had an actual chunk of the atmosphere that dipped, right? Something that um, something that uh, I have seen over and over and over again. Any time I look at the data, the same conclusion it is very apparent. And these dips in the atmosphere, which causes the millibars, the pressure of the atmosphere to drop uh, very fast causes not only the winds between the high and low pressure systems, but it also compacts the uh, counterclockwise uh, winds of a low pressure system extraordinarily. Now, we're still, those were cold temperatures, correct? Those yes. Cold temperatures. Yes. Well, here's what happens. Here, here's what, uh, because of the time of the year, let's call this a very weak system. Because when the air warms, as the warmer temperatures begin to take over, it will add 10 times more strength what? to these storms. And this is also a good example of like the, the last time I was on when I said we're going to have storms that cover the entire United States. Yeah. It's a good example that, uh, yes, it's possible. It did, in fact, happen. But the, if we can get through the remaining you know, weeks here without uh, any further incidences, during the summertime when the heat comes around, that's when we're going to have problems because uh, in, in the winter, the energy is not as abundant in the atmosphere compared to uh, in the summertime where you have a lot of warm air, warm waters driving these storms. So imagine this in the summertime where you have hot air from the Gulf driving these storms. It would have been at least 10 times uh, of more magnitude than what it is now our infrastructure cannot take those type of winds and when you know what um when you when you look at these things and you look at the trending you see the same picture all the time that as the days go forward this is going to be the norm 
97 mile an hour winds going up to 150 mile an hour wind. No! We have seen the 150, but what, five, six years ago when we began to speak, uh, they began to creep up. You would have storms where they would produce, uh, they called them derachios. And those were producing pretty high winds, but they weren't sustained. Now you have this storm, which was producing sustained winds. Yeah. Because I remember one time you said, are those going to be gust or sustained? And I said 150 mile an hour sustained. Yes, you did. Right. Yes, you did. 150 <laughs> mile an hour sustained winds, which is blowing my mind because that's worse than a hurricane. Because a hurricane, yeah, it could be 150, 160 mile an hour winds. But it's going to come and go in, in uh, I don't know, you know, 12 hours or something. You're going to get through the eye. But you're talking about 150 mile an hour straight line winds sustained for, you know, 72 hours. Some outrageous event that we can't handle. I mean, let's go back to California because if, let me just say this, folks. There's 3,400 of you live with us on YouTube right now. If everybody would push thumbs up right now, you would drive the algorithms crazy on YouTube. And, 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 and force uh, our live broadcast to just shoot to the top, probably the most watched live broadcast going on right now pretty well in the world, at least in one of the top 10 shows going on right now. So if you hit that button, thumbs up, it will drive the algorithms up, and more people will say, hey, what's going on here? And they will show, and they need to be here. There's some critical information. Mike, uh, let's go back to California because I think you're breaking some news here that is nowhere out there. You're saying something should be, there should be information about volcanic eruptions in California. Talk to us. Yeah, because the USGS has been compiling data for a while now, and um, all the data indicates the exact same thing. Um, of course, everybody has heard that term, we're overdue for Yellowstone to erupt, but based on what? And what they're doing is they're going back into the geological record, seeing previous uh, eruptions, and then they get the uh, intervals in between there. So they come up with a determination that we're overdue. Well, that, that the California situation is a bit different. It's not based on intervals. This is based on actual data uh, because they're so close to the oceans. You can you can also penetrate the sea on the ground with certain pieces of equipment, and you can look underneath that shell, and you can actually see. Uh, you can detect the heat underneath the uh, ocean at that ocean floor. And so with the new feedback that's coming in, the new pressures that are coming in, it's just enormous pressure. It's going to have to relieve itself. It's going to have to relieve itself. It's like a pressure cooker, right? But yeah. let's say instead of uh, that little uh, uh, knob that goes on the top that dances around, it, just imagine somebody duct tape that down where no pressure can escape or it's going to continue to build. And it, it's going to build up enough pressure until that steel breaks, in this case, until it cracks through the ground. Well, we had that, you remember the methane leak? Yes, yes, I in remember that. In conjunction with that methane leak, come to find out that uh, there was an emergency because they had to seal off um, various places of that area. And even, uh, what was it, 120 miles away from that area, there was another methane leak. So we know it was not coming from any stored uh, containers. Right? right, right. This was coming from the ground because there, 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 there's gases trapped underneath California. Well, to make a long story short, uh, if you look at where the fires are, and if you begin to look at where these fires were started and... Um, where they would really take off at, where they were extremely hot. If you can get some of the heat measurements, of it, you're going to see a correlation between the gases that are emitting from the ground and the heat of this fire. Now, what didn't make sense is that certain parts of the fire had no foliage to actually burn to get that hot, but they did anyway, which implies that gases were seeping from the ground, you know, helping to uh, increase the temperature of the fire. In this case, uh, folks, there you hear it. Okay, so what Mike around the world is saying, there are volcanoes, 13 volcanoes located along the lines, uh, volcanic line through California. And he's saying that there's going to soon be a volcanic eruption in California. He is saying that scientifically the research is showing that also, that if you look at where the wildfires that took place in 2017 and in 2018, both of those were caused because extreme 
gases are coming up from this volcanic ridge. This volcanic gases are leaking and are causing and fueling the potential, the, the, fueling the fires that actually have happened. We'll be back with more in just a minute. 